then there will be even more performance levels fully electrified yeah. coming this year. When a couple of these pictures uh, came up in the public, maybe a little bit before it was originally planned, <laughs> also on your blog. Will we see more colors on the M2? We have a plan in our new factory uh, to also bring additional colors. Quite a nice selection also of some, I, I would say, unique and cool M colors that come on top of the existing lineup. But Hey guys, welcome to the Shanghai Motor Show 2023. I am here with Timo Rash from BMW M. Timo, you're in charge of sales and marketing, and you're here because we have two special BMW M cars. So let's start with this one. What do we have here? Glad to have you here in Shanghai, Horatio. It's really cool to have you here. Obviously, we brought two stars to the show here okay. in Shanghai, and one of them is here right behind us. It's the i7 M70. M70. So we went from M50 to M60 to M70. So what does that number mean? More power? More expensive? <laughs> It means more of everything. Okay, so let's Obviously, start with that. I think um, to, to see that the i7 model line was introduced and we already showed with an MPA version with the M70 mm -hmm. that we have um, a clever, cool combination of mm -hmm. drivetrains, but now to set the tone from the top, the M70 is really putting everything in terms of technology, in terms of fully electric propulsion mm -hmm. into the i7 platform. So we have the new, let's say, benchmark for yeah. our flagship i7. It means more performance, also more luxury items, but obviously, at the end, it's, when, we, when it comes from M, it has to do something with performance. So when we talk about performance and power, how much are we talking about in this car? So in this car, in the European horsepower specification, 660 horsepower, okay. 485 kilowatts. Okay. And this in combination with, in the um, M boost mode, 1,100 newton meters of torque, Massive. is quite impressive. Yeah. And at the end, numbers speak uh, to some degree, when you see when you see the performance, yeah. but when you see the acceleration figures, and I think this is really something that you will be able to uh, feel: 3.7 seconds, zero to 62 okay. miles per hour. It's 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 quite a beast. So if we take that and move it into the ICE engine at M, it's just as fast as an M3 and M4 and as an M5, basically, right? It is, and we are we are talking about the performance layer sure. here. So we are really, I think, setting the new benchmark. This is the most powerful, fully electrified BMW ever made. Okay. And I think it's a, it's a clear signal that um, fully electric um, propulsion mm -hmm. and M goes along very well. And so talking about the i4 M50 and talking about the iX M60, now that's the third fully electric car coming from M. Gotcha. So let's move to the front a little yeah. bit. Maybe you can tell me more about what's changed with the car, right? Because I'm assuming there is some new tech, Clearly, we have a brand new color here, so we can start with that. So what do we have here? In terms of color specifications, you've already seen on the previous uh, cars that we showed the two-tone color two -tone combination. Color. Mm -hmm. And what is something that is completely new, we will now be able also offer the two-tone color combinations in uh, combination with our full uh, special wish uh, individual color. Okay. So you can specify the upper side of the car by picking some of mm -hmm. the basics. And then you have uh, more than 100 different colors wow. that you can use for the lower part of the car. So it's really never ending options. And I think mm -hmm. that's really something unique that the customers really will like. And you can see it here with liquid copper liquid and copper. sapphire black. Okay. That's obviously something a little bit more outgoing, sure. but I think it fits the car very well. Gotcha. So this is the position and color, basically. Yeah. Then, of course, customers, like you said, they can choose some other colors as well. Yeah. Now, when it comes to tech, what has changed from, let's say, I know the i7 Normal 60 is not under your purview, but what has changed as far as the M touches? One thing that uh, also a lot of um, customers seeing the M760e the first time have mm -hmm. asked for, especially with the M performance pack, when everything is blacked out, sure. they were saying, yeah. hey, can I also have the illuminated kidney grills? Okay. And that's something now with the M70 coming, so you can see the car having the blacked out grill, mm -hmm. but still having the illuminated uh, kidneys. And that's okay. something that really makes the car stand out because you can really switch between the stealth mode of mm -hmm. it not being illuminated or like this, the full presence, the full dynamic capabilities being also in the extroverted design language of the gotcha. car. And, and I know you're not in charge of engineering. I don't want to put you on the spot with any technical details, but maybe can you maybe highlight some of the changes to the electric models to make it more of an M car kind of thing? Yeah, obviously this is something that is, I think, uh, really important to give you also when you sit in the car and when you experience the car, all of the, let's say, all of the emotional experiences that are specific. And for that reason, we also have an M-specific mode in the okay. car that gives you this kind of sporty look and feeling and combines all the drive systems at the same time. So gotcha. this in conjunction with, for mm -hmm. example, the uh, also, the M-specific tuned uh, suspension system mm -hmm. is giving you all of the road-holding capabilities that mm -hmm. you 
want and, and have to expect from a car with that performance. Sure. So from, a, uh, from an M perspective, like what would be the customer type for this particular car? Like how would you define that customer? What would they be looking for more than a regular i7? First of all, they, um, I think that's something with the new 7 series generation and specifically with the i7, people that have uh, some uh, level of confidence. I think yeah. um, you want to be seen as someone that is uh, maybe a little bit breaking the norm and mm -hmm. setting the benchmark. And yeah. I think with the i7 platform overall, and especially with the M70, we're setting a lot of new benchmarks. And so for people that are really outgoing and yeah. at the same time want to express themselves, sure. and this in a luxurious package with all the performance that you would expect from M. So have you, I mean, it's a hypothetical question, have you ever thought about offering some exterior carbon fiber bits on a car like this. Because I've seen plenty of aftermarket companies that are kind of playing with that, and honestly the results are quite impressive because it changes the car's character quite a bit. Is that something that you're like thinking about it at least, or? Um, often, you know us very well. So always we are thinking about a lot of different okay. options, but this is something, at least for the point that we are right now, is not okay. our main focus. Gotcha. Because okay. this, uh, let's say, luxury sedan segment sure is something where you can play with these accents, mm -hmm. but it's not the major, let's say, positioning uh, point of this, sure. of this type gotcha. of car. So let's maybe go to the back a little bit so we yeah. can see the car around, and I can yeah. ask you some more questions about, because from my understanding is that the M Performance electrified BMWs, they're quite successful. So yeah. I remember seeing some figures from Frank Vermeule as well, that the i4 M50 is one of the best selling M products today. The best the selling. The best selling, right? <laughs> so essentially there is a demand clearly for M performance yeah. uh, electrified vehicles. So we have the i4 M50, we have the iX M60, and of course the i7 M70. Should we expect more from M in the future uh, in different segments maybe or different products? And I think for some people, uh, there was a contradiction between fully electrifying vehicles mm -hmm. and the M DNA and the M messaging. Sure. And I think introducing now fully electrified vehicle on our performance level mm -hmm. with the cars that you just mentioned, mm -hmm. I think shows that this is not a contradiction. Sure. It's a perfect fit and the acceleration and also the very emotional, let's say, package because mm -hmm. acceleration is something that is kind of easy to achieve mm -hmm. in the new okay. generation of fully electrified cars. Okay. But make it feel nimble and feel it like BMW M style, mm -hmm. I think this is where our secret ingredients come in. Okay. And uh, the success of the first um, performance cars, yeah. fully electrified, give us good reason that this is, the, this is the way forward and there will be even more performance levels fully electrified yeah. coming this year. We talked about it a little bit off camera also, but talked about this video from Aria Plug with this new 5 Series i5, which we'll see it very, very soon. Uh, and that car looked extremely dynamic, you know, drifting and all of that. Is there any M touch in there, or uh, for sure? <laughs> for sure. <laughs> okay. So uh, having having these two guys, um, the red, the Red, red Bull, Bull Drift, Drift Brothers, Brothers drive the car. The idea was to show the dynamic capabilities yeah. of a car that comes from M, that yeah. has the DNA of M, and at the same time is fully electrified. Yeah. These two guys, they know what they're talking about when they talk about drifting. Yeah. And they mostly drift M cars, so now the i5, all right, one plus one equals three. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> very, very interesting. All right, so uh, clearly I'm excited to drive the car because I know the, the regular i7 was mind-blowing as far as, you know, Sterling performance according and all of that, so I want to see uh, what it can do. But from, a, from an interior perspective also, are there any differences in this car maybe compared to the regular i7? So I can highlight a few of them, maybe you can tell me if I'm right or wrong, yep. but I know there is a new operating system yes. that has been improved, and also it's got a very special carbon fiber in there with a little bit of silver in there as well. Yes. Anything that anything else that I'm missing? or But these are the main ingredients, okay. because we wanted to, the level of, let's say, luxuriousness, but mm -hmm. at the same time sportiness that we already mm -hmm. have shown with the M760E, yeah. I think has set um, the tonality, and now sure. we are putting a couple of additional elements in the M70. Yeah, I mean, we'll open the door yeah. maybe, so that way we can, yeah, let's, the one that we're talking about right here, right? Yes. So that's a carbon fiber. Interesting. And yeah. I think this is, as soon as you get closer to it, you can really see the sure. high-end touch. Carbon fiber itself, I think, is already, quite a nice mm -hmm. optical way of showing the technology and weaving in this silver thread sure. into this carbon fiber is an unseen and very cool new look. And I asked Marcus Flash as well the same question. Um, I was not sold initially on the idea of a cashmere interior, but once I sat in it and had a chance to drive with the car quite a bit, I actually enjoyed it, I would say, a lot more than leather. And I know there is this stigma that maybe leather is more premium, more luxury and all of that, but do you feel like customers are ready to embrace this type of fabric inside a car? Because it does look good, it feels great, 
and uh, it, it just looks luxurious, just like the leather. And what you just said is exactly right. A lot of people, when they see it from far away, they would judge it as not being the top level uh, part of the interior. Okay. But I think this is something that is, I think, underrated because it's quite the opposite. Okay. It's in terms of its uh, capabilities to give you like a good feeling being mm -hmm. sitting in the seat. It's giving you even, let's say, a, a better feeling than leather. Okay. So for that reason, I think having cashmere, which is very well known in, yeah. the, in, the, in the fashion industry as a mm -hmm. high-end material, yeah. using that in 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 interior of a car, sure. I think it's kind of a no-brainer, mm -hmm. but it's unexpected. And for yeah. that reason, I think I invite people to test drive, sit in such a car, and then they will probably be convinced very, very quickly. Gotcha. So Timo, thank you for all the details on this car. I think the next step will be to kind of talk a little bit more about M. And before M becomes all electric, there is a stepping stone, which is the plug-in hybrid M products. And we have one here, which is the BMW XM label red. And I think there's a lot to talk about that car. So I think we should go there and then we can pick up on more M things. And maybe we talk some M2 just a little bit there too. All right. We're all right. at the BMW XM label red. So let's start maybe before we talk about some of the design details and specs and all of that. Tell me what's the idea behind this label kind of line up within the BMW M brand? I think, first of all, before we go to the label red, it's really important to also get the story of the XM overall, because okay. now being out there with the XM, I think uh, it's, it's us, for us, for coming from the BMW M brand, it's really important to get the clear message that on the one side, obviously, we stand for very much performance-driven cars, and the cars like M4 CSL, M2 now just came out, M3 TS, so you will see that also coming into the future. The XM is kind of an additional element, additional layer that comes into the equation of BMW M, but it's not taking away from where we come from and what we do. So I think that's important. And the label red is, let's say, kind of putting the, the, the final touches to a real highlight car of the XM being top-notch performance driven. So the label red is because the XM wants to be a little bit different. It's a little bit more outspoken. For that reason, we didn't, let's say, use our standard recipe of the BMW M GmbH to say that's now the competition version or something. We said, okay, our highest performance version is the label red, and that will come with uh, 748 horsepower, so it's uh, quite, quite a machine. Gotcha. So actually, you anticipated my question because I was going to ask you uh, that based on feedback. A lot of people said, why didn't you just call it an XM competition or XM CS, yeah. and you went straight to a label. What was the reason behind using that label? It, I mean, did you draw any inspiration from the, the red label whiskeys and all of that? Or is that something that played into the naming convention or? No, that was, uh, it's at the end, just a coincidence that there are okay. other things using the same. For us, it was trying to really make sure that the XM is perceived and understood as something that is not trying to copy our standard ingredients of the BMW M brand. And for that reason, instead of saying CES, CS or competition, we said, we have to be different here to also make sure that it's not fitting into the standard cluster of our existing cars. We expand and look at the uh, normal XM. Actually, we have three right now. So we have a six-cylinder plug-in hybrid, and we have the middle one with the V8 and now the top one. How would you differentiate between the cars aside from the power? And then also, how do you differentiate between the customers? Because you have one customer maybe for the six-cylinder, mainly a European customer probably. Then you have the middle one, then you have the top one. In your marketing plan, how do you you know, look across that? First of all, the 50E, the six-cylinder offer, is one that is not offered worldwide. Okay. So there are only specific markets that will get this car. And for example, in the United States, there, this car will not be on offer. Okay. So um, for us, it's clear the XM, in terms of its positioning, where it wants to be, is uh, seen as something that is kind of the ideal sweet spot. For the markets that offer 50E, if there is someone that is wants to be seen as someone outgoing that has the kind of the, the DNA of BMW M and that extrovertedness. Mm -hmm. That's I think where the 50E comes in, where the ultimate performance is not really the absolutely decisive factor. But we have also seen in our market research and in the closed rooms that we did, that a lot of people are craving for what's the highest horsepower version. And uh, for these people that only go to the very top notch level of the price ladder, of the performance ladder, I think that's where the label red comes in and uh, is perceived as something that makes completely sense, having the most powerful SUV. So do you plan to expand the, the label red in the future? Or not the label red, but any other labels? Is there a plan to maybe come up with more special XM cars? That's kind of the plan of this label? Um, for sure, the label red is something for, that comes uh, to stay. 
uh, I think uh, it's, it's important to see that this is our, on the XM model, uh, model range, this is the top-notch level that will also stay there. Of course, we have a lot of ideas and you know us very well in terms of product differentiation topics, uh, also in terms of the exterior or interior design. So uh, there might uh, be able, we might be able to bring a couple of things, but um, we don't think that we should, let's say, change from this label red to different naming conventions because it now has been established as something that is true and also, I think, authentic to the XM. So now to give you a little bit of feedback, even though you haven't asked for it, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. Based on what I've seen in the community and readers and all of that, there was this ask, you know, that maybe the, the XM label red should have been a little bit more special inside. And what mm -hmm. I mean by inside, and I even said that in my own review, like I feel like the concept XM interior was fantastic. Like mm -hmm. that, that interior design was really good. Then it kind of felt production ready, honestly, more than any other interior design. So. Is that something that you may be, you're maybe thinking, hey, you know, maybe like you said right now, we might do something special in the future for customers that want even more than this one? Of course, I will not give you all the secrets of sure. our future product plans, but for us, it was important to set the right tonality with our concept vehicle that we showed, I think it was in Miami 2021. Miami, yes. And I personally believe, and I have also received lots of feedback like that, that a lot of these ingredients that were taken over are kind of unexpected. If you talk about the rear part of the car, uh, I think what we call the M lounge, the, the prism um, design on the headliner, also this wrapping around feeling. Sure. I think things that have not been seen in cars in general, and especially not at BMW, and all of these things have been taken over into the XM series production, which is kind of unexpected, even like the cushions in the back seat. Yeah. And I think having the right ingredients to take from a concept car without going, let's say, too crazy for a serial production car, I think that's the right mixture of things. Sure. There are always things in a concept car that you would like to see also in a zero production yeah. car, but not all of them can make it into real life. So now let's talk specifically about the XM label red. So how many units globally? There's a little bit of confusion there. How many are global? How many are frozen black with run or red yeah. access? Maybe we can clarify that a little bit. Yeah. So um, maybe, this maybe is, we can walk around yeah. actually, maybe a little bit. So, so the specification on. that you see here of the label red is the one that is limited to 500 vehicles worldwide. So the frozen black with the red accents like here. Gotcha. This combination, 500 worldwide. Okay. Production starts as of summer of this year, okay. but the label red in general in other color combinations. And on the label red, we will start offering our complete individual color palette. And this is I think, something that is bringing even more colorful and cool variations. All the cool M colors will come to the XM label red as an offer. And so. 500 of these, flat black with red, but the label red in general is not volume limited. Okay, understood. So now when it comes to individual colors, will each market decide on the price or if they want to include that standard in their offering yes. for the label red? Yes. So basically it's not a universal $5,000 more for uh, or no. euros for that. No. Gotcha. So each market decides their yes. package. Yes, in the United basically. States, uh, uh, the, the market team together with us decided that it makes sense to include that in the price uh, instead of having a, a very specific setup later on, but it's depending on the market. Gotcha. So now if we compare it to the 650 horsepower version, what improvements have been made to the car overall. So we talked about the horsepower. Is there anything else that's unique to this car? Obviously, the design language that you can see here with the red accents will not, yeah, sure. will not be available uh, on, the, one, like on the, yeah. any, any other one. And so for that reason, I think this is one thing that's standing out. Sure. We in, initially uh, discussed a whole lot about more differentiation needs or less. But we decided at the end yeah. that we want to keep it very subtle. And one of the things that you will see also if you get the car in any other color than the frozen black is the red surrounding of the XM label here. So this is something that is always taking, taking a special connotation and you have seen that also on the M4 CSL, having the red outlines is something that is meaning, meaningful for us in terms of special models and the XM label red has this as red part. So it's very subtle as a distinguished uh, way to differentiate between the cars. Let's open the doors maybe yeah. a little bit. So we decided, especially with this car and this um, red accent band, that we, we want to make sure that the color theme is uh, like literally red thread going through the entire car. Okay. And I think having these subtle connotations to make you fully aware that you're driving the 748 horsepower version is something that comes along as a, as a subtle message, mm -hmm. but at the same time very obvious. Right. 
And then it's fair to say that the same combination inside the black and the Toronto red is only unique to this particular 500 units, basically. This will also be available on other versions. Oh, so the exterior be. color is so the one that is limited. Exterior color. Gotcha. Yes. And what about the wheels? Can you get the wheels on other cars too? No. no. This, no, this, no. this wheel with on. the red accent lines okay. is also specific to this gotcha. specific um, version. Only the interior, yeah. basically, will be something that's yeah. uh, it's quite unique. Very, very interesting. Um, I've also uh, noticed earlier there is an X uh, M. Uh, Sao Paulo yellow. Um, I guess you, you just a statement color, really. They wanted to shock the world basically <laughs> with that color because it really stands out. I think a lot of people are surprised how well this color works on the XM. Okay. Uh, Sao Paulo yellow, obviously, is something yeah. that is part of the history yeah. of also very famous cars. And yeah. we launched the, the G80, I think, G, with yeah, in G82, this, yeah. a G82 in this yeah. color. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's a connotation of saying an M color, a hallmark uh, cool color. Yeah. And when a couple of these pictures uh, came up in the public, maybe a little bit before it was originally planned, <laughs> also on your blog, I think uh, people I think, saw that yeah. like unexpected, but when you see the car in real life, and we have it now yeah. here at the Shanghai booth, yeah. because China is one of the markets where the 50E yeah. will play a decisive role. Yeah. And I think it's something for, if you're afraid that the car is a little bit too shy, yeah. then to pick a yellow yeah. color. Uh, let's move away a little bit from the XM. Unfortunately, we don't have an M2 to show here today, but we can talk a little bit about that. So first question, I'm going to go right into it. Will we see more colors on the M2? Because that's the feedback that I've seen so far. People want more colors. Yeah. And as you know, we have started with our production end of last year. And now for the initial, uh, let's say, market launch, we have decided on a specific set of colors. But we have a plan in our new factory uh, to also bring additional colors. It will not be the 50 colors that you might be used to from uh, our plant in the United States. But uh, quite a nice selection also of some, I, th I would say, unique and cool M colors that come on top of the existing lineup. But um, I think it will be a, a good, good offer. Is there a reason why there is no individual program on the M2? Because that was a huge, huge ask for the previous generation. And my understanding was that there were limitations from the plant, really. Yeah. Um, are they the same, the, the same limitations are in place in Mexico as well, or are you working towards that? I think in general we see that the higher you get in our model lineup, the higher the demand for specific uh, individual option is. Okay. And so on our entry level, on the high performance segment, and there is just uh, compared to an M5 or an M8, a lesser amount of requests for that. So for that reason, there is no really big push in that direction, but we were kind of, uh, and the team from our plant as well, we were kind of looking into the color variation. So that's what you will see um, later this year coming, sure. which is a good signal, but we are not going to go into a very, very specific individual offer on the M2. Gotcha. From a sales perspective globally, I'm not sure if you have yet any data, but would you say that the demand for the manual is quite strong? Yes, uh, obviously at the very beginning, it's quite difficult to really judge, okay. uh, but we see a quite good uptick mm -hmm. on the manual. We also have there, depending on the market, sometimes it's, a, it's an option that sure. you have to yeah. pay for. Yeah. Some other markets, it's a kind of a same price same level. Price, yeah. And so um, most markets have used this communication very actively. And the perception by the, by the M community, but also the fans that are maybe not really M-minded yet, mm -hmm. has been so positive that I think we will probably see a higher take rate than what we initially planned. Gotcha. Okay. So now if we still talk about the mailers a little bit, um, now you have a lot more data on the M3 and M4. Would you say that the, uh, that the take rate is quite high on that car, or are you seeing still more all-wheel drive and automatic because it's more versatile? I mean, it's market-specific, yeah. of course. Like US, I would assume there are a lot more manuals than in, in Germany, probably, which is surprising, honestly. We have now, um, when we're talking about the M3, M4, we have seen, compared to our initial take-up after launch, we have seen the manual Obviously, there they have the competition version, so you have a slightly reduced horsepower. Sure. So there we have now a lower take rate compared to the initial launch phase. Mm -hmm. And we have a higher than originally planned take rate on X-Drive. Okay. So you can see that this is something that even the community of M enthusiasts are, when they think about using the car in all kind of weather conditions, X-Drive and an automatic transmission comes in quite handy. Of course. So um, we will see, I think in terms of manual, we see an uptick right now, and then we see what the overall market demand will be like. All right, so final question, more of a curveball. You've mentioned some things in their competition, CS, all of that. Is there room in the M2 lineup for special models? I'm not going to name, you know, some, but what do you think? I mean, clearly we see, we see a pattern and a trend 
if you look at all the other products, M3, M4, M5, so the logic will dictate it, yes, but I will let you answer that more in an official way. I, I think you have already answered to some degree. <laughs> I think there's a pattern, okay. but we are very happy about the initial feedback about okay. the M2, because I think it was also a bold move in terms of setting a new design language with the M2, and now to see the very, very enthusiastic reactions of the people that see it live the first time, and the people that get to drive it, like yourself, I think that's the, the very, very good starting point. Okay. And yes, we have a, a pattern and a recipe. Let's see if we also will use it on the M2. Um, I cannot give you all the details of what's going to happen, but we are very happy about the initial launch because I think the car, like it is right now, like it's coming to the markets in these couple of uh, next weeks, I think is, a, is something that perceives uh, or is a, is a good, good element of making sure that the M DNA and the M brand is still fully alive also on these type of uh, internal combustion engines. Sure, makes sense. I mean, I'm, I'm sometimes the voice of reasoning, you know, trying to not educate people, but maybe share some of my knowledge. But basically, it, it is normal for any company to build a, a, a base product and then kind of build upon with special, you know, models. We've seen it across all the other OEMs too. So no, no surprise there. And clearly BMW has these patterns and trends that they do that. Uh, and, and then of course, if you look at other industries like the iPhone, they're always going to be something better and nicer coming out that doesn't keep you from driving a car, you know, that's already very, very good. And honestly, the, the feedback on some of the previous products, some people don't really like a CS because they might be they might be too sporty for yeah, them, but yeah. they still enjoy a yeah. very base M2. Same thing with with the competition. So I always feel like yes, there are people that always want to upgrade to the next best one, but there are also people that say no. I just want this car because it's kind of it's more of a daily driver than a CS, which is more track focused and maybe only carbon bike seats and so on and so yeah. forth. So that's my personal take. No confirmation there, <laughs> but uh, but thank you for for all the candid answers for uh, everything else. I appreciate it. I uh, look forward to driving this car and of course some more M2 because that's very exciting. Always a pleasure seeing you, and I'm sure we'll uh, talk about more M products this year, next year, and so on and so forth. Lots more stories that we have to tell. So thank you very much for your time. Sounds good. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye.